hello everyone. My name is Marion with DTM Real Talk Channel. It's the channel that you can tune into, have the ability to listen to the thoughts of others about topics all over the world that touch every one of our lives. Everybody, everybody goes through basically the same thing. There is nothing new under the sun. So if you're going through, someone else has already been there. Maybe you can find hope. Maybe it's a pathway that can set you on the right road just by tuning in. So DTM, real talk, just keeping it real. And if you like it, like us at the bottom, subscribe, and let us know just how we helped you. Just keeping it real, nothing but love. Good evening. Good evening. This is DTM Real Talk, and we're just keeping it real this evening. This is our third episode of Ricardo Porter. Last week, y'all heard, Pass the Porter goes to jail. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. But this is going to be good. Say hi to the good folks out there. Hello. Good evening to everybody. Glad to be back again. <laughs> Thought I couldn't wait to hear the rest of this just like you guys. But if this is your first time chiming in, Please like, share, and subscribe, and uh, let's get down to it. Now, last week, for those of you who are just chiming in, though, um, Ricardo Porter actually shared with us his journey as a child and how he was called to the ministry. And then he actually shared with us how he really, really, really uh, idolized a woman in, in his journey that caused him to go to jail because of some bad choices. And tonight, we're going to hear the rest of his story. But what I want to do right now is say thank you before we even get started. Thank you for your mm -hmm. transparency. Thank You're you welcome. so much. Because um, it takes humility to share mm -hmm. your life. You can't talk about your life in a manner in which he had unless you're free. Yes. yes. There had to be some freedom along the way, but I'm going ahead of myself because I want him to finish his story. So last week, he shared with us how he had gotten out of jail and sought to look this woman up. Mm -hmm. uh, he was your wife, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, still your wife. No, no, no. She, 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 wasn't. Was, she wasn't my wife. She wasn't. She wasn't she because was, we were engaged. Yeah, they were engaged. We were just engaged. And 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 so she reminded me, y'all. Now, from my Bible thumpers out there, this lady reminded me of the woman in Proverbs five. And <laughs> recall, I'm sorry. I just I I, I couldn't I couldn't. <laughs> You know, it talks about her. It says, it says, for the lips of a strange woman, mm -hmm. that's what it says, mm -hmm. uh, drop uh, as honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. That's what the Bible mm -hmm. says. It says, that's right. It says her end is actually bitter as wormwood. It says her feet, uh, her feet go down the deck, and her steps take hold on hell. This is a bad <laughs> woman here. <laughs> look, like, look like Ricardo Porter met this woman. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real, but he actually recognized that he he you know sinned against God by making her an idol. So, right. finish your story. Tell us about it. All right, Mary. Um, like you said, I had you know this this when I got out of jail, um, I still went seeking her, knowing that she didn't want me. Um, <clears throat> but I still went seeking her once I found her uh realizing that she had moved on and and so <clears throat> at this point i had went into this mad rage mm. this 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 pure jealousy rage uh because the church wants to let me go okay uh at that time i was full-time pastoring so i don't have a job okay that that so that was my income <clears throat> so um the church wants to let me go um um i owe it seemed like every pastor in the city of tyler mm. uh behind you know my bad choices of uh trying to please this woman and uh I, I'm, I'm on probation uh uh, here's this pastor, this this preacher. He's on probation. I got to go, and I got to talk to these people. You know, every week or however it was back then. 
uh, to, for them to stay in my business. I couldn't travel outside the state, oh. you know, and all this stuff like that. And so anyway, I have, I made these bad choices. And so uh, now I'm just being talked about throughout the city. At first I was being praised and now I'm being, you know, belittled. I'm being talked about. I'm, I'm being portrayed. Um, uh, no preacher wants to have me in their pulpit. Uh, nobody is calling me to preach. Uh, all they want to talk about is Pat Porter went to jail and mm. I think he's on drugs because I was, I was stressing, I was stressing so bad that, uh, that I had lost a lot of weight. Wow. I had lost a lot of weight. I was stressing so bad, uh, because, um, I, I just wanted her. I cared no more about the church. And especially when I was hearing all the, the horror stories that was going on, I decided to um, resign mm. from, and I never forget. And him and I are so close to this day. Uh, uh, the digging of one of the diggings of that church, and him and I are super close to this day. Um, he was the only digging Marion at that church, and at the time I had about eleven diggings, and he was the only digging at that church that sat with me. And told me, he said, Pastor, you got a problem. Mm. He was the only one that that recognized the problem, could see it, you know, and and was willing to address it. And loved and you. So he loved you. He loved he, you. He, he, he does. He does. He, <laughs> him and his wife. Him and his yeah, wife. He showed you love. Yeah. Yes. 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 They both, yeah. And that family, uh, they they really love their pastor, and there's some more, but but he 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 was the one that came to me, Marion, and sat me down at the church and said, Pastor, you got a problem. Mm. And he said, he said, I know that you. He said, I hear all this stuff that's going on about your own drugs and this. And he said, No, I, you you're not on drugs. He said, I know that you're not on drugs. He said, I know that you're not an alcoholic. I I I know all of that. He said, a man that that do what you do and, and preach the way you preach can't can't just, you know, have that that kind of addiction. Um, he said, you having trouble, you know, managing your money. You have trouble managing your money. He said, and I said, yeah, you, you're right. I, I broke down. I let my pride go. And, and I told him, you're right. No, nobody else came to me in such a manner and say, hey, Porter, you got a problem. And your problem is you don't know how to manage your money. And, 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 and you are letting things that are not um, priority, you know, take control of you managing what you need to take care of. No, nobody came to me with that. Mm. And I thought I could control it. I thought because of who I was and, mm. and, and all of that and, and, and all of that, I thought I could handle it. No problem. I can take care of it, you know, but it got out of control and I realized I couldn't handle it. I, I was out of control mm -hmm. and and so satan knew i was out of control so he capitalized on that yeah he said i got it i got it he's out of control the church don't want him the community is talking real bad about him mm -hmm. nobody wants to hear him preach anymore nobody wants to book him uh you know he's out of control i got him i got him and so he calls this major rage to take place um, that I stopped this woman. I resigned from the church. Mm -hmm. uh, I resigned from the church. And, um, um, and when I resigned, I had no job. Mm -hmm. I had no job. And so uh, they gave me a, a $1,500 check when I resigned. Mm. And I had no job. And the little apartment that I stayed in at the time, I owed them so much money. They wow. they they was just ready for me. They were ready to put me out. That I I owed them, Mary, and I owed them so much money that, that 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 what money I did bring to them, they say it's not enough. You know, just turn in your key. You know, they they literally threw me out the same week. Wow. And so now I'm out on the street. Um, I have this little car that I finally got paid off. Um, and so all I have now 
um, you know, I have no family here. My brother was uh, touring in, in, in Afghanistan and uh, at the time, and my sister, you know, is in New York and, and, and you know, and, I, yeah. I, and I'm the oldest and they expect me to be the, mo mo you know, role model. And, and here I am, uh, you know, just firing down lower and lower behind this this issue. And so I um I'm now homeless. Wow. Because um I have nowhere to go. Right. I, right. I, I have no money. I have no job. Right. I have no church. I have no family here. And I've just been put out of my house. Wow. And I'm homeless. I'm mm. homeless. And I go from having a home and two Cadillacs and a pastor of a prominent church to, um, you know, sleeping in the back seat of my car. Mm. I I'm sleeping in the back seat of my car at a truck stop right here in Tyler. Wow. The same city where I was so well known, where I was so, you know, um, uh, respected and, and all of this same city yeah. and now I'm homeless in this same city I'm homeless I'm at this truck stop I'm sleeping in the back seat of my car um, I have no money so therefore my phone is cut off I can't call anybody mm. and, and, and and with that it, it, you know you would think it, it's, it's bad it's getting worse because Marion now the car that I have, <laughs> it breaks down. Wow. It breaks down, and so now, now I have nowhere to stay, nor transportation. And so now I have no way to try to try to find a job. And so I find myself. Long story short, uh, Mary, I found myself um, walking the streets of Tyler, Texas. Yeah. I, I found myself, uh, and I never forget, and I'm gonna try not to cry, but I never forget that I I was walking down the street, mm. hungry, nobody to call, mm. nobody I could rely on, no, no. It seemed like the whole world had turned their back on me. Mm. And I um was walking down the street in Tyler named Gentry. I know where it is. Yeah. And Mary, I'm walking down this street. I need a shave. I need a bath. I need clean clothes because I have no money to do nothing. I'm hungry. And I'm walking down Gentry Parkway trying to find change to get something to eat. That's how bad it had gotten for me. And I went to a restaurant. This is how bad it had gotten. I went to a restaurant that I was able to eat at with ease, with no problem. Mm -hmm. And I remember a young lady that was pregnant with twins. I told her, I said, ma'am, I don't normally do this, but I am starving. I haven't eaten in two days and I have no money. I'm homeless. And she said, I don't have much. I'm getting ready to have these twins, but sit down. I'm, I'm going to feed you. And that, that woman fed me. She fed me and I'll never forget it. She even gave me $5 as I was leaving. She said, and she hugged me, she hugged me tight. And she said, I don't know you. She said, but I can feel that you're going through. You hang in there. And that was the best thing that had, had ever happened to me and during that time, because it seemed like everybody that I thought loved me had turned. And, and, and Marion, I was, uh, I was ready to uh, give up. Mm -hmm. I was done. I, I was done. I, I was done. I walked back to that truck stop where my broke down car was. Mm -hmm. It was cold and I laid in the back seat of that car with no cover. I remember just putting a shirt 
over me to halfway keep me warm. And um, I laid there. I had um, asked the lady. She had some pills at the truck, truck stop. Mm -hmm. She had some pills there. And I asked her, uh, could I get one of those pills that I had a headache? Oh, okay. And she said, yeah. And she went to ring up another customer and I stole the bottle mm -hmm. of pills because I had made up in my mind that I was going to just take my, just, just kill myself. Mm. That I had nothing else to live for. Wow. This is it for me. And so I took the pills uh, off the counter. First time I'd ever stolen anything in my life. Mm. First time in my entire life. I took the pills and uh, sat in the back seat of that cold car I found some paper and a pen I had in the car and I wrote to my sister in New York. I told my sister in New York in the letter, I said, I'm going to kill myself. I want y'all to forgive me for what I'm going to do. It's okay. Mm. It's real. It's real. I told my sister in the letter, I said, um, I said, I'm going to um take my life. There's nothing else for me to live for. Mm -hmm. Um the church is gone, my friends are gone. The one I thought I loved is gone. Mm -hmm. um, I have nothing. I'm homeless. I said, I'm going to just take my life. I said, y'all forgive me. And I love you. And Mary, and while I was laying there and had finished writing that little letter, mm -hmm. I was laying there in the car, not even realizing that the radio was on. Mm -hmm. I was so out of it. I didn't even know that my car radio was on. And God had a song to play for me through the airwaves. And it was by James Fortune. And his song is, I Forgive Me. Mm. And in that, and I had never heard that song before. Mm. And God had that song to play for me through the airwaves hmm. because I had left him. I had fallen and I had left from hearing him. And so he loved me so much. Amen. And he loved me so much. And he knew that my assignment was not over. Yes that he sent that song through the airways mm. by James Fortune, I Forgive Me. And the song, the words of the song said everything that I was going through, when others turn and leave you, when others forsake you, when others won't forgive you. He, and the song said that God has already forgiven you. Amen. <laughs> God has already forgiven you and what you have to do is learn how to forgive yourself Amen. and Marion when I heard those words because it was everything that I was going through because I, I just couldn't seem to forgive myself Yes, I had let my family down I had let my, my friends down I had let my church family down I had let God down I, yes. I just I just felt I had let everybody down. Yes. And I couldn't forgive myself. Mm. And God had already forgiven me, yes. but I just couldn't forgive myself. Sure. And when he played that song for me through the airways, I, I, I remember uh, getting out of the car, I fell on my knees and I screamed. Mm. I screamed 
and I screamed and I cried and I screamed and all of that depression, all of that, 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 that heaviness, mm -hmm. all of that stuff that Satan had planted in me, all of that hatred and rage, it went away. Amen. It went away. Mm. And when I got back in the car, I said, God, I'm ready. Wow. I'm ready. I'm wow. ready. I'm ready. And so uh, when, when that happened, Marion, it's amazing. Yes. God is amazing. Yes, he is. Because after that, I got in touch with my sister in New York and told her what was happening. And she cried and she said, I thank God that he stepped in. Yes. Because we would have lost our minds if we had known you done that. And she sent me money mm. to get my phone on. And I, she sent me the money. I got my phone on. And I called a preacher friend of mine that I knew he was a friend, but I was too ashamed to reach out to him. Mm -hmm. And when I reached out to him, Marion, he said, where are you? Wow. I told him where I was. I told him what was going on. He came. And I'm going to tell you his name. His name is Pastor Ephraim Collins mm. right here at Tyler. Mm -hmm. He came and he fixed my car. Mm. Took money out of his pocket. He fixed my car. He made sure I had money to get a hotel room and so that I could shower and eat and Yes. All of that. He even had me to come to his church and preach. Mm. And all of that. And um, he made sure of that. And uh, I was able to get me a job. Mm. I was able to get me a job. Okay. Um, then, uh, going through this journey, trying to get back. Mm -hmm. Trying to ask God to get me back where I need to be. He's taking me there and um, uh, a preacher uh, that I hadn't talked to in years called me out the blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, he say, uh, Pastor Porter, he said, man, what are you doing? Where are you at? And I said, man, uh, I'm going through a tough time right now, but I say, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm making it. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, he said, listen, why don't you come preach for me <laughs> one Sunday? And I said, uh, okay, I was familiar with the church and familiar with right. the, with him. You know, I preached there many times before. And I said, okay. And um went there to preach for him and, and all of that. And um that is when I saw the wife that I had been praying for. Mm. So so by there now, is, that's when you start praying for a wife. <laughs> yeah. The, then is when I learned how to pray. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And um, there is where I met um, my wife, Kelly. Okay. Okay. I am uh, blessed to have and be with to this day. Yeah. Um, so I, I met have her you guys been married? April 21st will be six years. Wonderful. Six years. We've been together seven and uh, six years of marriage. And and it has been a blessing uh, from the very first day uh, to this very moment. Very uh, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, she'll get me if I don't tell it, but I'll just tell her that, yeah, she hollered. She said, yeah, I will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I got to just say this, I almost lost her. Mm. I almost lost her. Um, because, um, you know, I, I, I still, Satan still had a small bit of hold on me dealing with this woman. Mm -hmm. dealing and with what he did. Dealing with the other one. Yes, the other woman. Okay. What he did was, Marion, when things start to get better for me, is when she appeared again. Of course, of course. Yeah. And so me being so still over 
heels with her and this and that and the other. Um, I, 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 I went backwards for that moment and and to satisfy the flesh. Right. And yeah. Lust and is I, a beast. Lust is a beast. Is a beast. It's and a beast. It, and it's real. And, and it's real, but the power of God is greater. Yeah, and, but it's great. And Amen. we have access to God's yeah. power. We have yeah. access. We just have to utilize it. That's right. <laughs> and 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 so long story short on that, as I was as God was, you know, elevating me to come back and get better in, in, in ministry and so forth. Um oh did, did, are okay. we still here? Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. And and what happened, um, she came back uh into my life and um I fell for the bait, but it wasn't the same. Uh I wasn't as crazy over heels as I was before, but I still had a sense of love for her. And um, I was dating uh, my 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 wife. Now we, we wasn't married and we wasn't engaged, but we had just started dating. Mm -hmm. And my problem was Marion was I was trying to actually wing her away while still dating, you know, the woman that God really sent in my life. Mm -hmm. And so here I am trying to play this uh, two-part uh, player situation and not know what I'm doing. So, um, you know, I, I, I mess up. I mess up. I mess up. Um, her and I, we're in the store. Um, this the other woman. We're in the store together and everything. And my, 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 um, my wife now that I was dating, uh, her family comes into the same store mm -hmm. and uh, they run into us and they say, hey, what's going on? Huh? Wait a minute, you know, aren't you supposed to be with my sister, you know? And um, it was it was awful. It was awful. Um, um, you know, we we had you know, police was involved. Um, a lot of argument was involved. Wow. But, uh, you know, even with all of that, and I'm making this short, even with all of that, uh, God worked that out. He knew that it had to come to such a, such a uh, point of magnitude uh, for me to really open my eyes. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, I almost lost Kelly. I almost lost Kelly. I went to New York to stay with my sister for two weeks. It kind of, you know, and I came back. And when I came back, um, God set it up to where we ran into each other at a store. Mm. And um, I never forget what she told me. She say, she say, I'm not. Um, what did she say? I, I I don't uh hate you or I'm not mad at you. She said something that that hurt me deeply. She said, I'm disappointed in you. Mm, wow. I rather her had said she hated me, don't want to talk to me no more. <laughs> but she said something that that hit deep. Right. Because I had disappointed so many people prior to her. And 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 to, and to know that I disappointed her, the mm. woman that God showed me that was my wife uh -huh. to be, uh -huh. that 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 hurt me deeper than anything. And so, um, long story short, she she you know she was she was definitely a call sent woman because in all of that that I took her through with that, she still loved me. Mm. She still me she still loved me now she 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 stayed distant from me and, and everything until you know she felt comfortable of course. you know oh yeah of course because her heart had been broken so many times before 
And, and so she she knew that she had to stay distant until she knew in her heart that it was, you know, going to be safe again. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, God made it happen. Mm -hmm. God made that happen for Amen. us. Yeah. And uh, we've been married now six, April will be six years. And she's been my strongest support. Amen. My, my number one cheerleader. Yay, Kelly. <laughs> Yay, Kelly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, very good, very good. Yeah. That that is um. Once again, I say it, and I'll say it again. Thank you so much for your transparency. Um, Man. it takes humility to share yeah. what you've shared tonight. These last three weeks, it definitely yes. takes humility to do that, and um, to know that you understood that mm -hmm. not only shamed or 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 disappointed so many people, but the main person that you disappointed and shamed was God. And you, was understood, God. That. you understood that and you mm -hmm. accepted that and, and realized how much he forgave you and how much he loved you and then right. get back on the right track and you could and you did. So I'm yeah. for that. I'm so thankful and so grateful. I'm honored to have you as my guest tonight in these past three weeks as well. Thank, Thank yes. you. Yes. Um, so in closing, what would you say what advice would you, oh, oh, but before I, before I ask that, so in this season of your life, um, yeah. temptation is real. It is real. Yeah. Um, yeah, but very God real. Has given us everything we need to live a life of godliness and holiness. We just have to right. submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit to be able to right. do a man right. and freedom. And by running, <laughs> Paul say, run, run. Yeah. <laughs> run, yeah. You know? So <laughs> run. And I, I thank God for that. But not but. And what would you say to um, other pastors out there that are struggling in some of the areas of their lives that you were struggling in? Mainly, it was it was the beast of lust. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was managing mm -hmm. mismanaging money, but it was mm -hmm. the beast of lust. Absolutely, <laughs> it was. absolutely, absolutely. And you have a lot of men of God, people. Period. But I'm talking about men of God because you're a man of God that struggle right. with that. What would you say to them? Give them some advice before you chime off for about a minute. Uh, I would certainly, thank you uh, for asking me that. Uh, I would say to the, the to the pastors, um, stay, stay connected, first of all, with God closely, but also stay connected with people that's going to be willing to tell you the truth. Amen. Um, uh, stay in connection with people that's not afraid to say, hey, brother, I wouldn't do that. Hey, brother, I wouldn't, sister, I wouldn't go over here. I wouldn't mess with that. I would stay connected, stay close, connect, have people in your circle that's going to, to that's going to love you in such a way that they're going to be willing to either take backlash, did not see you be hurt. Yes. You know? and, yeah. and so uh, that's what I would say to the pastors uh don't don't let satan uh take you to a place that some have not been able to return i'm blessed tonight yes because i god blessed me and i was able to return but some was not able to return yes so i'm i'm certainly blessed tonight i'm yes. certainly blessed tonight thank you so much Amen. So much, and as you, you, you know me, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to ask God for the scripture to what you just said, and I think it is He that rebuked a man afterwards shall find more favor. <laughs> yeah. than with the tongue, I think that's what you said. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so with that said, this is DTM Real Talk, and we just doing what? Keep keeping it, it real, it real, and we'll see y'all next week. <laughs>